Hi, everybody. My name is Chelsea, and today we're going to be doing a lesson about compassion. And our story today is called Moody Cow Learns Compassion. My name is Moody Cow. Well, it's actually Peter, but everyone calls me Moody Cow except for one time when my friends were calling me coward cow because they thought I was a wimp. It all started when my friend Bully and I caught a garter snake by the pond out back. Bully said snakes have to eat live food, so we caught a cricket. I was going to feed it to the snake, I swear, but when I whispered sorry to the cricket first, Bully laughed. You're such a wimp, he said as he grabbed the poor cricket and fed it right to the snake little guy squirmed in half in and half out of snake's mouth bully shouted awesome he was so excited to see the cricket struggle for its life let's call the snake jaws he hollered i guess i was glad jaws got a meal but the whole thing was making me sad so i handed jaws to bully and told him to go home bully was so mad he said oh i get it you're a, such a wimp you can't handle feeding jaws See you later, coward cow. Don't call me that, I said. I'm moody cow. And then I stomped back home. That night I had the worst nightmare. It was as tiny cricket. I was as tiny as a cricket and a huge snake slithered up to me, its jaws wide open, sharp teeth dripped with venom. My little legs were shaking. I screamed, don't eat me, don't eat me. Ah! I'm sure my mom thought I was nuts screaming like that. At breakfast, she said, remember to tell grandfather that dream you had when he comes to do the mind jar with you after school. Grandfather and I sat on our meditation cushions, just like we always did after school. I got out my mind jar, the special jar of water we use to represent my mind, and the sparkles that represent upsetting thoughts. This, I said, putting a pinch of sparkles into the jar, is me getting mad because Bully called me coward cow all day. Why would he do that, asked Grandfather. Because he thinks I'm a wimp, because I don't like feeding live crickets to Jaws. Who's Jaws? A snake we caught by the pond. Hmm, Grandfather said, I wouldn't like feeding live crickets to Jaws either. Just think how the poor crickets must feel. I know how they'd feel, I told him. I had a nightmare last night that I was a cricket and a huge snake came and tried to eat me for dinner. I woke up screaming like a little baby. Grandfather's huge shoulders shook with laughter and he smiled gently. Not like a baby, like someone who understands how it feels to be eaten alive. Better put a bunch of sparkles in for that one. I put in three really big handfuls of sparkles. Grandfather shook up the mine jar and we sat quietly watching it. I breathed in and out a few times. In and out, in and out in and out and one by one all those thoughts drifted down to the bottom of the jar as the sparkles settled down i noticed my mind did too feel better grandfather asked i tried not to smile but i couldn't help it it did feel better now let's do something fun grandfather said come with me what on earth is grandfather up to i wondered as we picked up bully from across the street but grandfather wasn't talking next we stopped at the pet store are these crickets from another country or are they from around here? Grandfather asked. The salesman pulled out a cricket for us to look at. Ah, uh, these are gray crickets, just like the ones from around here. Grandfather paid for a clear plastic bag filled with live crickets. Finally, we drove home and grandfather brought the crickets to the backyard. He smiled mysteriously. Bully and I just looked at each other. We sat looking at the crickets. Cool, Bully said, look at the dead ones at the bottom. Mm, grandfather said, I wonder what it feels like to be stuck inside there, crawling all over your dead brothers and sisters. I couldn't help but shivering. Ugh, not very good, I guess. Bully's face fell. He frowned. Not very good at all, he said. Instead of feeding them to the snakes, what do you say we release them? Grandfather asked. Should we let them go on their happy way? Yes, Bully shouted. Awesome, I cried. Grandfather opened the bag and we carefully held them. Let's look for a good spot, somewhere they can find food and water. How about in the cool shade under a bush or a tree? I found a good spot by the stream that feeds our pond. It was like a cozy cave hidden under a little juniper bush. It looks nice and safe under this bush, Grandfather, and there's lots of food and water. Okay, Grandfather said. First, we say, may you be happy to the crickets. 
and then we'll release them on the count of three. May you be happy, we hollered together. Then we counted one, two, three. We opened our hands and the crickets hopped down under the bush. Hip hip hooray, grandfather shouted, raising his fist high. Hip hip hooray, we called together, punching our fists in the air. Grandfather lay back down in the cool evening grass and Bully and I stretched out too. All was quiet. Then we heard one cricket song. Pretty soon they all chimed in. We just lay there listening and looking up at the sky until the sun set and stars came out. All of a sudden, Bully sat up. Wait here, he called, disappearing around the corner of the house. He brought Jaws from his cage across the street and stood away from us over by the pond. Do you think he'll be happy here, he asked. You bet, Grandfather chuckled. I bet that's exactly where he found him. Bully held Jaws out near the water's edge, and we all said, may you be happy. The long green stripes slithered into the cool water of the pond. Bully sighed. I guess swimming in a pond is a lot more fun than being stuck in that dinky, stinky cage. I think you're right, said Grandfather. Wild animals are happiest in the wild, just like pets are happiest in your home. Wait a minute, I said. What if Jaws eats the crickets? That, my friend, is the circle of life. I'm afraid everyone needs to eat something to stay alive. At least Bully gave our cricket friends a fighting chance by releasing Jaws far away from them. Yeah, and at least they won't be stuck in that creepy bag, Bully said. I can imagine how the little guy feels now. Then Grandfather got up and stretched. I'm hungry. What have we got to eat? I could go for, hmm, some nice crunchy crickets, he said, smiling his crooked smile and winking at me. Bully stopped, horrified. He's joking, I whispered, and we all laughed out loud. May all crickets be happy. May all snakes be happy. May all pets be happy. May all children be happy. May all parents be happy. May all beings be happy. And that is the end of our story today. So I have a few questions for you about our story today. Why did Bully call Peter Coward Cow? What did Peter learn from his dream? What did grandfather say his dream was about? When did Bully begin to change his mind about dead crickets and how did that change his treatment of his snake? Now that the snake is out of the bag, it can eat the crickets. Was it kind of bully to let his snake into the wild? What does this circumstance tell us about our role in not harming and not killing? Compassion is giving kindness and care to people who are in pain or who are having difficulty. When we, be, we become sensitive to the pain of others, we're less likely to do things that will hurt them. We're going to do a meditation now to develop our compassion for others. It's almost exactly like meta meditation that we've done in the other videos, except that the phrases are a little bit different. We can use phrases such as, may you be free of pain and sadness, may you be at peace, and may you know that you are loved. So let's get started. It's all right if there's noises around you. I'm sitting outside today and there's certainly noises going on around me. It's about trying to focus and tuning out some of that stuff. So let's listen to our bell. Settle in and get comfortable. Maybe you're laying down, maybe you're sitting up. But settle in and take a deep breath. Think of someone or some being that's had difficulty or pain. Maybe it's a pet or a tree that recently got cut down. Or maybe it's a person that you know of. And then repeat in your mind. May you be free of pain. May you be free of pain. May you be free of sadness.
May you be free of sadness. May you be at peace. May you be at peace. May you know you are loved. May you know you are loved. And then we can repeat these phrases for ourselves as well. May I be free of pain. May I be free of pain. May I be free of sadness. May I be free of sadness. May I be at peace. May I be at peace. May I know that I am loved. May I know that I am loved. Let's listen to our bell again. Maybe wiggle your toes, wiggle your hands, your feet, your fingers, and your shoulders and your arms your head as you come back to this space. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you can remember our lesson about compassion and treat others really well and treat yourself well. Thank you, have a great week.